So good to go there. Um, I did want to ask before we get too deep. We at the last month's meeting, we decided we could reschedule this for the second Tuesday, like two hours later. Today is the third Tuesday because we had a conflict with that. So can we just say the third Tuesday from now on? Is that going to work for everybody? Or not Tuesday. Today is Thursday. Days don't work anymore. So <laughs> we were on the second Thursday. This is now the third Thursday. Um, so I think to avoid conflicts, I think the third Thursday at noon is okay with the Koa US calendar if it's okay with you guys. That works for me. Works for me too. Okay, I'll update the website and make sure the calendar is correctly reflecting that. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. So I had a question I wanted to ask everyone, um, and it relates to uh, series links in the OPEC. Um, the reason I'm asking is because I get lots of requests, or I have been getting lots of requests, Margaret and I spoke about this yesterday, um, to have series results display, um, or series links display in the OPAC results already displays on the details page. Um, I'm wondering if this would be a good idea to add to Koha proper um, via the XSLT or if there would be <clears throat> any reason that libraries find that problematic and would rather it just be um, some, something custom done. Any thoughts? Or opinions there? For a public library, for us, it's imperative to have the information there because the patron wants to see, you know, which volume in the mystery series and what series and all of that. It, you know, it could be different for, for academics or special or whatever, but for, for us, we really depend on that. Right. Um, um, I'm with the Department of Archives and History, I'm Janice. We use the series uh, link also, and I had submitted a help that we're supported by Bywater. And so we submitted a help desk ticket, and I'm trying to find that information, and they fixed it for us. I can't remember right off the top of my head exactly what they did, but I'm looking for my ticket. So once I find it, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I know I know lots, lots of... Um, Libraries have used that uh, custom XSLT to make that happen. Um, yeah, I just double checked. I was pretty sure that I had already changed that. So I already do have the series linking in my <laughs> OPAC results and my staff results because my catalogers wanted it. Um, so I, I agree that I think it, there's no harm in adding it, especially if it's got a CSS class where you can hide it easily. Um, and like Lucas, you know, with us, through different versions and different changes, it's stopped working or you know been working differently, and so you've had to change it several times for us because it's custom. Yeah. So it'd be better to be just you know there. Uh, community version that included that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go see if there's um, a bug about that already opened. If not, I'm gonna open one and be about adding that. That was my big question for, for this month. Um, uh, does anybody else have anything they'd like to talk about? Are there any other custom XSLT uh, features that E3 are currently enjoying um, that we might as well bring up while we're looking at it? Um, I can't recall off the top of my head, but it's- I don't have anything either. I know we had the um, the MPAA movie rating added on our details page because again in a public library they wanted to see is it rated R is it rated PG and so we have that added. Uh, 
I suspect at the end of the day, it would be okay to add any of these as long as they included a CSS class. So um, mm -hmm. folks could hide them. didn't want to. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what all I changed. I know that I had some changes in there for the RDA fields before those were pushed to community. Like, um, I don't think I'm using that anymore. I think the series was the big thing that um, I made changes on because my catalogers wanted it to appear. Um, and I think I, I changed how it searches and I changed how it traces because we didn't want it to search the traced serious headings in like the 800s. We just wanted it to, to search on the term in the 490. So I broke some extra stuff in there. <laughs> um, but overall, I think that's the only thing I've tweaked, but it's been a while <laughs> since I messed with those. Um, Jason, do you use a, like a use GitHub to host an external XSL teach sheet? We have a, a server, like a web server internally that I'm hosting my, my style sheets on. Um, if, if search results were included in the community version, would you uh, possibly potentially use that um, instead? Reasonable. Probably not because of the things I broke. <laughs> Um, but I think it would still it would um, it would still be helpful. I could take out some of well, not really. No, I might I might I would probably use it in the OPAC. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it really has to do with the tracings because like it it doesn't work how we want it to work. Um, if if it's searching not the term that we're seeing that we're clicking i guess we've discussed um and again public library so we've discussed not displaying the location of the publisher because our patrons don't care it's just extra information on the page and i think right now that's all kind of connected together and I, I haven't pursued it, but I'm sure it could, you know, something could probably happen with it right now. But, um, you know, and we've even discussed not having the publisher, just having the date. The hiding of things are, are usually um, a lot easier and we can leave the XSLT alone and just do it via jQuery or CSS. Um, and Galadriel, right? Galadriel. Because ideally, libraries can start up their Koha, they can download Galadriel, and then just toggle all of that extra mark details that they care about to show and turn off the ones they want. Uh, if they want a really streamlined, simple interface to so just, here's the title author, Click on it if you want more, or if they want the results uh, list to really get into the minutia. Another thing we did, which it's not working really right now, but um, because of our version upgrades and stuff, but for DVDs on the results page, we didn't want to show, you know, five lines of contributors and performers and all of that. We just wanted to show the DVD title. And then if you want all that, go into the detail record. So um, we had that hidden for a while. So we still had the author showing on books and that, but on DVDs, it didn't show. And right now um, there's something wonky with it, but um, it might be nice to be able to say, you know, for different item types, do you or do you not want to include um, that information? Based on the item type. Well, uh, thinking item type, but. And Barbara, do all those other relevant people to the film end up in the same mark fields as usually the author and co-author, if it were a book? 
say, let me see. Yeah, if it's if it shows in the 100, um, it can also show in the like 700. If you have wow. the actors and stuff, they go in the 700, and that's going to display in the same place that an author would from the 100. Yeah. We've done a lot of, of customization on the display of the location and call number. Um, and availability on the results page in the OPAC because it, by default, I guess it displays kind of all on one line. And to, for us, it looked like it was all run together and it was kind of hard to pick out, you know, where was the call number? And then there was, you know, a parentheses because you had two copies of it. And, and so we broke it out into different um, lines um, and maybe others don't think that was kind of difficult to read, but we just, when we came live, we felt that was not a, the best presentation. I think I've seen a, a request recently from a partner about the call number specifically, and some really do want to prioritize that and others seem to be fine with a location. Because like you said, if it's... Mm -hmm multiple branches with yeah, and that's, multiple items. And that's too, we're a single site. And so our needs are different from a consortium. Yeah, I've done some work on like trying to just make that cleaner in the OPAC. I've actually got the the location showing in a like a scrollable box. Um, and I went through and removed all of the extra verbiage on the library names. So instead of it saying like Altamont Public Library, it just says Altamont. Um, and I just remembered something that else that I did in my XSLT, I forgot I'd done, um, is I added icons based on, I want to say the 007, but maybe one of those other encoding fields so it can um, put it up an icon if it's a VHS or a Blu-ray or a DVD so that the patron knows that they're clicking on a record of a certain um, format and they're not placing a hold on a Blu-ray when they really want a DVD or something like that. Um, is that currently, do those currently share one icon? In the, in the Each one has a different icon. So there's a DVD icon, a Blu-ray icon, and a VHS icon, um, which is something I just uh, threw together. And it's either the 007 or the 08, or maybe the, the leader. I'm not sure where it, it it comes through at, um, but it's one of those that's encoding six. fields where it, that's defined. It's the leader. It's the sixth position, I think. Okay, yeah. So again, I did this a long time ago. I don't remember exactly what I did, but basically, I said if it's if it's got the B in the the sixth position, then it's a Blu-ray. Display the Blu-ray icon. If it's a D, then it's a DVD or a V or whatever the codes are. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did that in the XSLT. And I, my uh, librarians find that helpful too. <laughs> my cataloger goes into the OPAC to look at new DVDs just to see who cataloged it wrong. Because <laughs> the Blu-rays will show up on that list if it's not encoded correctly. So, so you've done that just for the OPAC, but not for the staff um, results? Right. Yeah. I can, here I can show you what it looks like. Might as well, right? Yeah. Um, let's try that one. See my OPAC screen? Maybe? Yep. Okay, so here's Jurassic Park. There's a VHS and then the DVD. Perfect. Okay. And then the Blu-ray. Uh, it's still not like super clean, but <laughs> I don't know. And then this is what I was talking about as far as removing the verbiage and making it more of a, a list that they can see without it like taking up the whole screen. So those are some things I've done. That's a pretty nice way to make sure each, sort of each result stays um, the same exact size, which is 
really nice, I think. Yeah, I wish we could get like cover images for um, the visual materials. That would make it look even nicer. <laughs> but we're, I think we're using, I think we are using the, however you say it, Cozy, co co whatever um, server, but it, Amazon doesn't really have DVDs and Blu-rays and neither does uh, Google, so. That seems to be a long standing problem with Koha is able to get those DVD uh, covers. Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a question, Jason. Um, I saw where you have the, the Blu-ray and the DVD icons. Mm -hmm. Is that only for your DVDs and Blu-rays? Or do you have like, you know, like, like a book icon for a book and a file folder for... I haven't. I didn't set that up that way. Uh, we were okay. just focusing on the visual materials at this point, but it's definitely doable. I think to add add an icon for each material type. Okay. Well, my library. We're we're a special library, and so our material type. Well, we have the material types, but it's set up a little different. And so, I had asked this question a while back. And it was by, I think it was item. Our items more is more set up as a where it will be delivered. So we have a public reading room where only your books and your, you know, pa papers. Some papers will be. Then we have an archival reading room where your certain books that you know just can't be out in the public eye will go. And then we have a media room where it's microfilm, microfiche, VHS. DVD. And so I was set up, it's set up like that. And so I think that was the problem when I asked the first time. But I didn't know if anything has changed or will be changing with the upgrade. My upgrade is scheduled for next month. I'll be going to 2005, I think. Yeah, it, it sounds more like yours are shelf locations or collection codes that you would want to leverage to, okay. to put in that kind of iconography. Like mine is leveraging the actual mark record. Okay. Um, and the encoding in that. But do you think, I think anything's possible? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Lucas is the magician, so he might know better than me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's sometimes good to make the to distinguish between what are the material type icons, um, which are different than the item type icons or images that you see and can administer um, through the administration item types. Okay. Um, those will show up in the holdings table um, and you can, you can administer those through your, your staff client. The material types are the little, um, I think they're PNGs, but I'm not sure off the top of my head that okay. um, uh, are not administered through Koha, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's from the leader. It's somewhere in the mark. I think it's the leader's sixth position. Um, we also but, use collection codes. Could we put an image with the specific, a specific collection code or is that right in script and script? Um, are, are you talking, about, Janice, about uh, the the OPAC details or the OPAC results page? Or uh, both. both. Um, so, or if we, or if it would be easier to do just one in the results, I would be fine with that. A specific image for each collection type. Co yes. Do you want me to, I can share my screen and kind of show you? Yeah, why don't you? Okay. Okay, can you see those collection codes? I mean, yep. the, these are collection types, but you know, we have codes for each one. And so if a person did a search I, in, in the results page, I, if it was just showing right there, they could see that, you know, that's a, 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 a book or if it was sheet music or 
And then when they go to the full view of the record, they don't necessarily have to see the icon. It doesn't, to me, that's not a big thing. If it was just in the results page, that's fine. Um, so would you, you have um, custom icons for each of these? Um, theoretically, you would have? I don't. OK. Um, so I, I think we could do something like you're saying, but we would need, um, since Koha doesn't have images or icons for collection codes, um, we'd have to find those. Um, okay. Come up with them. Uh, one option is to maybe look at, at Font Awesome, um, which is used a lot already in Koha. Okay. And, send you the link. Um, Koha uses Font Awesome 4.7, I think. Um, and so if you Google Font Awesome 4.7 icons, uh -huh. you can look through a whole list of um, nice icons. I don't know if you're going to find ones that would match perfectly for each of these collection codes, but okay. you may have to get a little creative. OK. But adding font awesome um, icons is fairly easy um, with jQuery. And I think we would be able to do it per collection code on okay. the page or the details page. OK. The collection code authorized value thing pulled up in front of me from my test site. And it gives you the option to choose icons. But usually there's a. If you want to use something else, put it here. And I'm not seeing that. Is that just on the item types select? Margaret, one? you're in administration looking at, oh, let me see it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you go to authorize values, collection code, and then go to edit a specific collection code, um, it gives you the option of choosing an icon. But doesn't appear to have a pick your own option. And Pretty sure it does. Okay. Yeah, the item types allow you to do a remote image, but the authorized values don't. Mm -hmm. so, but you can still like. <laughs> I had this big plan where I was going to put in the. Um, so we have the collection code images set up, and they show on the screen that Janice is sharing. Um, but I didn't like them, so I was gonna like put in those images and then replace them with jQuery with remote calls to external images, mm -hmm. but. I never got around to that, um, okay. but it's doable. An enhancement to add remote image option for authorized values? That yeah. would be good. I think that wouldn't even be too difficult to copy what is done on um, item types. Yeah, and then what about authorized value location? I'm going to look at that now. Probably it would be the same as question code. Yeah, it looks like it's the same. Um, actually, it looks like you can do that for any, any type of authorized value. There is an old bug, and I mean four digits old, uh, 7374, uh, can't upload icon for auth values. Uh, say that bug number one more time, Margaret. 7374. I'll put the link in Zoom chat. It is vintage. Whoever is working on it got a patch, doesn't apply. Um, but the last update was from this year in May. So. Um, 
Looks like somebody says they're working on it and it's halfway done. Thanks, here and give David some encouragement. Yeah, that makes me push along. This is a non-related question, but I got the email about the CoreCon. Do we still have to register just to view the online stuff? The most recent email I got from them said that you should register so that they can send you the link okay. to the, the streams and stuff. Okay, thanks. Another thing that we'd like to see in the um, OPEC on the results page is a copyright date limiter Publish date limiter search and a like date added limiter search. And before we went to Elasticsearch, we used somebody's jQuery and we were able to put a date search at the bottom. I put it at the bottom of the facets so that you could go down there and do it. And then after Elasticsearch, it doesn't seem to be working, but it seems like having date limiting um, on that page would be nice. Um, I, I feel like I remember seeing that maybe on your site. Was that, a, was that like a, a slider bar that you could change the dates with? The one, the one I saw recently that somebody does have in the uh, wiki uses a slider. I kind of can't remember exactly what mine looked like because it's not there anymore. I'd have to go back and it's on a slide, the PowerPoint slide somewhere, but I don't think ours used a slider, but it was something where you could put in a, I think you typed in a date range, something like that. And the, does it seem like the only reason that broke for you is because of the switch from Zebra to Elastic? I think so. That's when I noticed it wasn't working anymore. Um, maybe I can see if we can get two versions of that jQuery going, one that works for Zebra and one that works for Elasticsearch. Sure. You said that you saw the jQuery on the, in the Koha wiki. Yeah. I think it was from some university library it's quite lengthy um i'll take a look at that um make a note of that and maybe maybe it just needs a couple tweaks to work correctly in elastic search that's what i figure i just hadn't pursued it yet looks like jason posted the link to the jquery library thank you So this is a small annoyance and uh, on the results page, we're currently showing the title and we don't display the author after that on that, that whole line. And we have the author displaying below, but when you display only the title, you always get the last slash which I know is kind of like, it's kind of like those things are all connected, but it just looks weird to have this hanging slash at the end. And I'm, you know, picky enough that I'd, I'd love not to see it, but. That's because after the slash, there should be like the 245B or something like that. Right. 
I think that we should be able to write a regular expression to just see if the last character um, in a given element is that slashed and then just get rid of it if it is. Barbara, if you open a ticket on that, I'd be more than happy to uh, try to do that for you. Okay. I think another thing we did is because the reason we did it this way was we um, we added the author and made it a clickable link from the results page. And so we didn't want to have the title and then the author all on the first line and then have the author again is the clickable link. And so we removed the author from from the first line, but it would be nice if the author was a clickable link. Because it seems like if you're on that page, you ought to be able to click on it and execute an author search. And, and that's currently what does happen on your catalog or that's something? You... Well, we, we have some jQuery that's making it clickable. And let me see if I can. Oh, yeah. OK. I see. Uh, I, I assume maybe that's XSLT, because as I look at your links um, under your author searches, they're not like an author as phrase search, but it's using um, using an authority number. And we, I know we based it off of, I think we saw um, Ajax Library in Ontario, I think, and they had their set up with authors you could click on. And I thought, well, how'd they do that? And so we kind of followed up and did similar to what they're doing. I'm looking at your your uh, titles with the the trailing slash with nothing after it, and it seems like in all those cases it would be an easy regular expression to get to find those and, and get rid of them. Okay. Does the limit to um, currently available items, I think different times I've read that that's not really working correctly on the results page. Is that true or not? I, uh, are, are you are you using Zebra, Zebra or Elasticsearch? Elastic. I don't know off the top of my head, but I, thought that this was fixed in Elasticsearch, but broken in Zebra. I could be wrong there. Um, if I remember right, what it was doing was if there was one item available and one item not available on a record. Um, it was discounting that entire record or, or show, it was making it um, not available, even when one was available because there was one not available. I'll have to check to see if that 
is that still happening in your catalog? I'm not exactly sure, but I know I've, I've been in Bugzilla and I've been doing some stuff and I've, I've come across things making me wonder whether it works or not. So that's why I ask. I know I had a ticket on this fairly recently, but I don't remember. And it referenced the bug. I'm, I'm trying to find it. Are you all on Elasticsearch too, Jason? No, we're still on Zebra. Um, but I think the it seems like the bug referenced Elasticsearch. Is this it? Yeah, here. It's bug two five three seven five. And then, like we're on Zebra, but since we're moving towards Elastic, this is what we were following because. We didn't figure people would want to go back and fix Zebra anyways <laughs> at this point. And last I remember with Elasticsearch in the staff client, if you're searching in the cataloging search, it's not really using Elastic. It does if you do the search the catalog. And I know we opened a ticket on that and I think there is an open bug on that. But it'd be nice if it did. Something else we did in the OPAC was um, hide the subfield E of the author that says, you know, this person is an author or a novelist or a children's book illustrator or whatever, because it just seemed like it was extra additional information on the page. It made things, you know, more text. It just we wanted it cleaner, um, so that was just something we did. We use syndetics for images and um, reviews and just the different information that you can get from them. Um, and sometimes, the well, a lot of times it seems like the reviews and, and extra information, and they've told me they get their information directly from the publisher, so they just use that but it will have all these diacritic errors and it'll have html in it and just you know weird stuff and uh, i know they have you can report problems to them and and they can end up fixing things but is there anything in koha that would help the display of that information 
Yes, actually, um, if you, let's see, find a bug. If you look at bug 24473, um, Koha was <clears throat> not a letting not letting syndetics content uh, use HTML. So you were probably seeing like the markup in the, um, in those different syndetics descriptions, publisher info, stuff like that. Um, that patch should fix it and make the HTML not display literally, but, but do the things HTML is supposed to do. Um, and it looks like that one was pushed for 1911.09. Um, it's also in 2005. So that should go a long way to help fixing all that ugly markup stuff you see. Mm -hmm. um, for Bywater Partners, I think that means you will see that fix. Uh, I, when 2005 comes, I don't think um, you'll ever get to 1911.09. Oh, so the last week of November, first few weeks of December is the target upgrade date. Uh, early adopters are going to see it the second week of November approximately, um, depending on what date they chose uh, with the early adopters coordinator. Is it possible to still become an early adopter? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, I can mention that to Danny, who's coordinating it. Um, uh, and I'll let her know if you want to submit a ticket, send us an email or something, or I'll ask her to do that. But I'll make a note of it. And do does that, do you get like the new version loaded on your test server first and have time to look at it that way? Is that how it works? Or yeah, test servers are due to be upgraded November 2nd, and then our early adopters have picked from a series of days after that. So let me just check in with Danny. I think you can probably do it, but she'll have the final say on yeah. that. Yeah, okay, thanks. Well, do we have any other um, questions or things we want to address this month? That's all I had. I don't think I have anything else. I think this has been a really good list of topics. I feel like I had something I wanted to ask here, but I don't remember what it was. So maybe I'll remember by next month. <laughs> Write it down. Yeah, I have a problem with that. <laughs> my my problem isn't that I don't write it down. It's that I write everything down and then I can't find <laughs> find it in the mess. So um, I'll, I'll try and remember what that was. Just email it to the Google group automatically. Don't check for typos. Just send it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that could get messy. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. No, I don't think I have anything either. And it's a wrap, I think. So next month, the third Thursday at noon central time, right? Yes. So we're looking at, that would be November 19th at noon central, one Eastern, 
whatever that is, Pacific time. 11 Mountain, 10 Pacific. <laughs> okay. And I'll get that on the calendar so that it shows and I'll get that website updated too. Thanks, Jason. Sweet. All right. Thanks for chatting, y'all. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.